Emma Willard, pioneer of female education. Emma Hart was born on February 23, 1787, in Berlin, Connecticut, and was the 16th out of 17 children. Her father was a farmer who encouraged her to become as educated as she was able to. By age 15, she had mastered all content her public school was able to teach her, and she began attending high school. Within two years, she was teaching there. At age 20, she began teaching in Massachusetts and became a school principal in Vermont shortly after. After marrying John Willard and moving in with him and his college-age nephew, she began to study her nephew's textbooks and began to realize how different his education was than hers had been. It was then that a fire began to burn within her for female education equality. Emma's first educational idea was that girls and women did not have to be confined to society's views of them. Emma herself said that it has been made the first object in educating our sex to prepare them to please the other. You see, girls and women in the 1800s had few educational options available to them. While they could attend school until their teenage years, there was little left for them to pursue after that. Wealthy girls were often sent to finishing school to learn how to be a proper lady, eventually wife, mother, and homemaker. Well, Emma began to pursue the idea that these expectations were not only minimal, but degrading to girls and women across the country. This idea prompted her to realize her second idea, which is that girls and women could learn and master the same concepts, ideas, and subjects as men. Therefore, in 1814, she opened Middlebury Female Seminary in her home. She taught women to become teachers. She made it her objective for her students to learn everything that she brought before them, whether that be geography, history, philosophy. Her third educational idea was to extract individuals' powers of the mind for learners to develop and grow in their intellectual abilities. The author John Lord said, she was one of the first of modern educators to dwell on the importance of bringing out the latent powers of the mind. And this is the great revolution she made in female education. You see, she knew that women had the same intellectual capabilities as men, and she desired to bring out those capabilities by nurturing, guiding, and growing them. Now let's look at her educational influences. While Emma did enjoy teaching at Middlebury Female Seminary, she thirsted for more. Emma knew that educational reform had begun, but would not flourish without society's opinion of female education reforming as well. Therefore, in 1819, Emma wrote an address to the public, particularly to the members of the legislature of New York, proposing a plan for improving female education. In this plan, Emma advocated for broadened course study and rigorous academics for girls and women. Emma also asked the legislature to provide the funds for a seminary for the advanced education of women. Such historians as Thomas Jefferson and John Adams strongly agreed with Willard's plan. The legislature, however, refused it. One man, however, DeWitt Clinton, the governor of New York at the time, reached out to Willard to open a school in New York, and that is exactly what she did. Another major educational influence Emma had was founding one of the most influential schools in the United States, Troy Female Seminary. Troy Female Seminary was founded in 1821 with the purpose to educate 14 to 17 year old women in advanced studies. Troy introduced studies to women that had never been taught to them before. Science, mathematics, social studies, philosophy, and so much more was extended to women so that, could, they, so that they could grow intellectually for their own benefit or to pursue teaching. Well, by 1844, Troy's enrollment boasted 5,000 students, 500 of which would become teachers. The author John Lord remarked that in no female school in the country was education so complete and extended. Emma was teaching women that their identity was not found in a man or in society's views of them, and that they could achieve and advance in their academic desires. Emma also had a huge educational influence in regards to history and geography. Emma authored History of the United States, or the Republic of America. This textbook was met with extreme popularity and allowed students to learn history chronologically. She also created an atlas of the United States, which happened to be the first atlas that illustrated America's past and present. Now let's look at a critique of Emma Willard. John Lord, the author of The Life of Emma Willard, noted how Willard's educational efforts focused on educating women strictly for their own desires 
or for becoming educators themselves. While these are great reasons for education, Emma can be viewed as narrow-minded when it came to her efforts of educating women so that they could be in the workplace. One can only critique her so much, though, because women were not even really in the workplace at this time. I believe that Emma had an immeasurable influence upon women in her time, and that her influence has extended even until today. Without her efforts, the education of women may not have come about for several hundred years, if at all. Her spark for education equality lit a fire that allowed girls and women to receive equal education 200 years ago and even today.